everybody. I'm streaming from my phone. This is crazy. So um, I never done this before. So this is a, a work in progress. But we're gonna do a live stream from the studio uh, where you guys are gonna check out a company of iron. I was lucky enough um, to get a copy of a company of iron property press early and check it out. What? There it is. I can do all this craziness on my phone right now. Um, I can drop like the phone too so it could be bad it could be good we're gonna see what happens um this game right here company of iron has been talked about quite a bit uh but i don't think anybody's really clearly known what it was until now you guys are gonna have to um check it out live and see what's going on so <clears throat> this game uh, a miniature game of tactical squad based skirmish combat the idea here is that you're playing with a far lower model count than you would be um in a standard game of what should we call it of uh of war machine you're playing with squads of dudes it's a it reminds me a little bit of kill team for warhammer 40k um <laughs> anthony lee says over under ozzy drops his phone anthony there's no over under on this i'm gonna drop my phone at some point it's 100 percent. it should pay you zero dollars just know that this will get screwed up at some point um i used to have this great like mount for my phone but I used to use it backpacking for taking like stills and I don't know where it's gone. And so we're going to have to find that again at some point. Um, so what it comes with is you get, it's, it's kind of a, a, an interesting mix. You get Signar, which are a pretty popular army in, um, in, in War Machine, uh, especially the, the Haley mixes, of course. You get a brand new character, uh, Lieutenant Gwen Keller right here with her. She's like a Stormblade character. She's pretty hot um as far as like stats and stuff like even just if you want to use her in, in war machine you can use her like as a, a super solo and she's got her little like lightning grenade which is pretty cool too uh you've got the storm blades uh, standard six man box storm blades with storm gunners uh and the the they're the three dudes there with like they look like big weird drills it's hard because i'm looking past my phone at the thing and then i'm trying to aim my phone at the, the thing at the same time or at the the product at the same time so hopefully this works out and they get brand new uh pharaoh agadek the queen of carnage with her like punchy blades who's pretty awesome um <laughs> blue moose one two three one says hello from japan it's 11 a.m there it's a whole new day you're on friday already and i did say i was gonna do friday unboxings but i'm doing it on thursday so it's like christmas for some of us um and then you get the pharaoh brigands which are the standard i actually have these guys in metal i think i gave them to somebody at some point who was doing pegs um but you also get the uh the, these guys in plastic now what's also cool is you get a bunch of cardboard tokens and we're gonna take a look at this when i actually open the box in a second but you get stuff that can just get used in regular games of machine. you get two objective markers um and you also get flags so you get stuff that gets used in regular steamroller on top of that you get walls and they're the standard size wall templates so even if you're just like looking to expand your collection of signar or pharaoh or whatever um Jonathan Youngson says it's Friday in Scotland too. Ashley told the truth. Hooray! And Michael Green says, love your content. Thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, you can use this stuff in regular games War Machine. So it's a great value box uh, on top of also just being a whole new game. And that's where these cards and stuff come in. So let's actually get to it. Let's crack it open. Um, this is in the, if you guys, this is a very popular box size. If you're a retailer, you're just wondering how much space it's going to take up. It's the 12 by 12 board game box size. Um, so this is, uh, again, you can bookshelf. So if you want to throw it on a bookshelf, um, style just to save space, it doesn't take up a lot of space and it's about the same size as most modern board games. So let's crack it open. It didn't have any shrink wrap on it when it came in. So again, I'm doing this all left-handed. So this is gonna, you know what, let's just, Hey, with the magic of holding my phone, I can change to my not like stupid left hand and go with my right hand. Sorry, I just put this in the background. Whoop. So you actually see a company of iron um, and you can see all the goods. So here's the token sheet. Um, and these tokens are actually pretty handy because you've got wounds. It's like damagey tokens here, which are the blood drops. Um, and then on the back, it looks like these are supposed to be knockdown tokens too. So it's, it's like reversible tokens. I don't know what these do yet because I haven't read the rules. So I have no idea what these are. They're not just visibly recognizable to me, but I assume it's some mechanic for the actual game. They kind of look like some kind of pool of command points or focus points maybe. Um, and then up here you have your objectives. So What's cool is they're all themed after steamroll objectives. This is clearly a stockpile of like bullets and guns and stuff of munitions. Um, and then this one over here is like mechanical bits. So you could even use them in some of your theme stuff. You get the wall template, you get your flag templates too. Um, and I don't think this is reversible. I think this is two sheets, but let's open it up and find out. Let's open it up. Let's reverse the camera and then put this down. Whoa. So you can see me. Is this going to work? Oh no, you know what we can do? We can do it over here. I can leave something to my iPad. Whoa, you can do the extreme, the extreme low angle. You can see me from like a super low angle. And you can also see stuff above my head, like my copy of Space Hulk and all my other jazz. And I can use my hands this way. And this would be obviously so much, if I thought this through and I had like 
stuff stuff set up better to do this as opposed to just being hey, I have my phone and my phone has the internet and I also have a knife so I could just I could just do this instead of trying to tear this open like an animal with my teeth. <laughs> it's funny one of the things um, that happened when I started living in the States again is I started carrying a pocket knife again, which I hadn't done in years since I was a boy scout. Mostly because I lived in Toronto and it was safe and I didn't really need a knife right now. Uh, and is it two sheets? No, it's just one. So single sheet here. But they're all reversible. So you get one flag then. Just popping that up, but it's double-sided. And A and B objectives. Well, what's cool is if you don't want to see the A and B, you can flip them over and they're just little stockpiles too. Um, yeah, and again, I don't know what these are. There's These might be like command points. I'll have to, I mean, when we do a let's play for this, you'll obviously get to know more about the rules. But they're, they're zeroed on one side or like blank on one side and they're all numbers on the other. So if it's like the old Space Hulk, it might be that you get a random number of these and that they're all command pointy. Um, and then your wall token, of course. I'm not going to do all of this punch it right now because that would be boring as hell. Um, and look at, look at other cool things. We've got our rule books. So there is the core rules. And this is all going to look reverse right now because obviously I've reversed the camera, so you're going to see it backwards. I apologize for that. Um, you get a scenario guide and the advanced rules. And I'm going to pick this up now because I can actually do this one-handed. And flip you guys back around. So you can see it again. Uh, doot, doot, doot. So advanced rules. Core rules. So core mechanics of the game, which I imagine are things like, how do you move? Yeah, here we go. So like model types, statuses. Oh, injured. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. So you actually just don't die right away. When a model is damaged, it becomes injured. When a model is injured, it also becomes knocked down. And no other rule can prevent it from being knocked down. Your models don't grant abilities to other models. Blah, blah, blah. Can't be targeted by ranged magic attacks unless it's the point of origin within a half inch. If the model's casualty roll, it results in becoming injured. Oh, okay, so it's like more time then. So you have different states. So you're not just straight dead when you're killed. That's cool, because one of the things that happens in skirmish games is if they follow the core mechanics of their parent game usually, they go really fast. Necromunda and Mordheim typically one of the things that you got was you got a reverse ward save. The injury roll is actually a reverse ward save. So if you think of the injury roll in Necromunda, where you have to roll a six to die, you actually have a two plus ward save against death. Now you lay down on most of those results, you have only a, a one in six chance of standing up, but it's actually the way that the game becomes slower enough that your little skirmish of dudes feels like it's a lot more cinematic. So that's, I'm excited to see that that's in there. San Jose, it's like knockdown stationary in here too. Model stats all seems pretty standard because you just use the cards apparently from, I've asked, asked some questions about this before I open the box up and you just use your standard game cards. You don't have to have any specialty game cards for this. So there's, I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, there's advanced rules too. We'll take a quick look at that and see what's in here. Power attacks. Okay. That makes sense. Crippling systems. Cause apparently you can use light war beasts and light war jacks. You can't use heavies, but you can use lights, uh, which is pretty exciting. And then finally, there's a scenario guide, which gives you all your scenarios. There's six of them, Lost Patrol, Contested Ground, Raiding the Raiders, Salvage Hunt, Survive and Hold, and Under Siege. So, so far, this has a lot of similarities um, to things like Mordheim. There isn't, I have asked, there is no campaign system in here. So there isn't like an, an earned experience system. It's designed for fast-paced skirmishes. It's more like Combat Patrol than it is, or Kill Team, um, not the Bills of Rune King team, than it is uh, a campaign game in that regard. You can see I've already been in here. Uh, the characters actually came in this little sleeve. Um, and we've got... Whoa, there's Agatha, the Queen of Carnage. Now, this is made by the same stuff, or of the same stuff, as the newer cast, the unicast stuff, like the newer War Beasts, like uh, Loki was. And the casts are really nice. Like, super nice. Um, all of this flashing, you can see there's no mold lines on the sides. It's just take it off with a toothbrush, like bits of, of just, like, of super thin flashing. And everything looks pretty straight. That sword's actually pretty straight, which I'm excited about. A little bit of heating it up probably to get it perfectly straight, but Agatha looks perfect. The grenade, relatively straight. I might have to do a little bit of straightening on it, but I mean, it's resin. Like, it's super easy to work with. Uh, and the casts are wicked clean, just like they were with, um, uh, whatchamacallit, just like uh, they were with the um, the characters and the, the War Jackson War Beasts that I've seen in this material. And we got our other goodies. So we have, whoa! We've got the, uh, it's the standard box that it looks like, the regular plastic for the Stormblades. So they're all in their usual uh, plug and play stuff. Standard bases for them too. The Pharaoh, same dealie. So you got your plastic Pharaoh, just like the plastic Pharaoh in the box. Got a mini crate thing. This is pretty cool. If you guys haven't seen this, this is the, um, 
it's like a monthly subscription. They're just doing like collectibles, which is kind of cool. It's just like collectible minis. They can be used in the game too, but they're all just alternates, which I think is just, I love when people just do random stuff like that. That's cool. Uh, dice, same dice come in the starters, it looks like. And a little plastic tape measure. Yep. Hard plastic or soft plastic. And our cards. Oh, geez. I need to put you guys down for a second again. Because <laughs> I can't. One handed opening that card sleeve is going to be impossible. You guys get to look through the extreme high or like extreme low close up thing again. I'll open up some cards. I'm not going to make you look at them reverse though, because that would just be cruel. The people don't want to know what the stats are for War Machine. <laughs> Here's everything. Now screen cap this and reverse it. I'm a complete prick. Uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, here first. Do you, oh yeah, the Hexman Town cameo. You want to see some, some cameo stuff? There's some whoa, posters. I'm going to flip around again. There's the there's the knights and there's there's all my war machine stuff I'm using in a while and there's my there's my infinity stuff oh, it's some of my infinity. I have a lot of miniatures and dark age stuff over the shoulder too and I got painted up so yeah, let's look at some cards uh we've got Lieutenant Gwen Keller uh she's pretty cool stats Matt seven uh she's got storm grenades very far one AOE three thirteen does lightning damage. Glaive Bolt, Storm Glaive, five damage. Antonio Bravo says Ash, 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 Ash. I don't know what that's for, but, but I, I hear you, bro. Um, Galvanic Blast Field. That's cool. So her grenade gets to pick an attack type uh, on a direct hit. I guess the enemy model EA becomes a hazard, remains in play for one round. That's awesome. And, and Pow 10, you can block charge and stuff. That's super handy for War Machine. She creates a, a, a three inch AoE that remains in play with damage 10. Uh, can I grip when this model is hit by this attack? It suffers a minus two speed for one round. Voltaic Vortex on a direct hit against any model before rolling damage. Push models within two inches of the model directly, two inches directly towards uh, in any order that you choose. And then Force Barrier, plus two death against range attacks and does not suffer blast damage. Quick work, usual quick work. Yeah, it's pretty cool. No blast damage is pretty huge. Uh, these guys hate getting blasted up. But she's 13, 16. She doesn't really have kill me stats for a, a cheap solo. She's only four points. That's pretty awesome. And let's check out Agatha because I haven't ever looked at Pharaoh characters before. So this is neat. She's got parry. Well, that's handy. Parry, tough, and pathfinder. Uh, two times power 12s. That's pretty neato. Matt, seven. Def, 13, 15. Five boxes. She's only she's three points. No, she's five points. And then she works for Circle Legion of Scorn and Troll Buns because she's a pig minion. Because she works for everybody. Uh, counter charge, that's hand duelist plus two against melee. So she's 15 in melee, that's pretty huge. Reposed if you miss, she attacks you. Oh, that's awesome. Sidestep, sprint, and combo strike. So she goes to damage, what is it? Damage 17. Ooh, damage 17 in charge. She's pretty cool. She's punchy. I like the counter charge. That's pretty neat because your pharaohs have guns. So having her just sit in the middle of the pharaohs and be able to like charge out if you get too close to them is pretty cool. Or if you just try and get in the charge range, even speed five, she charges eight. It's not bad. Cool. And there you go. So there's that stuff. Uh, and then finally we have the cards. And this here looks like it's the game. Um, is is deck building these cards. So again, I'm going to turn you around. Whoa. Just while I open this up. Because otherwise, I, I will not be able to put it up. <laughs> I cannot left-handed like open this. Uh, but I can do it with two hands on that. Uh, let's see what we got here. Mm -hmm. And because someone's going to ask, it's a, it's a, a bench-made Griptilian. If people are gonna ask me that because I always get weird questions about like what kind of watch do you have? Like, what knife is that? <laughs> so I'll just answer that right now. Um bench made makes great knife. You guys are wondering. So let's look at some cards. Whoa! Mm -hmm. So it looks like you've got commander upgrades, which are these guys. And of course, this is gonna be stuff you get in the let's play. And I believe you're all like every commander gets to pick one of these as like their special jam. So every commander gets like a, a like a trick. It's almost like a a little feat. You get additional damage. You get five extra boxes if you pick this one. You're a Warjack controller. Um, and now let's take a Warjack. You get plus one command. In addition, the commander can choose the Jack Marshal advantage and gets repair D3. Uh, once each round, you can discard a command card to reroll any related roll to a friendly Warjack. You're getting yeah. against five extra match points. So your commanders are going to get a little bit tougher. That's pretty cool, actually, because that will keep them in the fight longer. They'll be like 10 box uh, heroes instead of five box heroes. And you can do things like grab this. So this one's available to, I guess, the War Machine armies. This one, War Beast Handler, is probably available to the Hordes armies. Um, so there you go. You can add in. It's basically the same thing, but you get Medicaid instead of uh, what you call it. And once you turn around, you can discard any command card to reroll any rolls related to the friendly war deck. That's cool. And you get five exchange box. Uh, Mass Strategist, you get a command. 
once each game, you can play two command cards for this battle plans in the same round. Cool. So like these are like your little mini feats, but this guy gets to do two per round once per game. It's like a mini feat for him. Um, and he gets an additional five boxes. Once each round, when you have priority, you can discard a command card and draw a new one. That's cool. And you get five extra damage boxes. Frontline officer. You get unyielding, plus two arm when you're engaged. That's awesome. Uh, once you're engaged, you can discard any command card to boost attack or damage roll. So like you're a cool fighter. Gorilla fighter, once per game. Uh, you get any a camouflage, plus two different benefit from concealment. Once each game, after filling out your hand at the beginning of the round, you can draw one additional card to add to your hand. Uh, when setting up your models being a scenario, you can exceed the scenario's limit for ambush and advance by one. Yeah, because I guess everybody that has ambush and advance point, you don't get it. You only get a certain number of, of fighters in this game, so it doesn't break the game. And then mission specialist, you gain plus one to starting rolls and priority rolls, because I think you roll to see was first each round. Um, and when rolling for scenario sides, once per game, you can choose a model in your commander's command range. The chosen model can perform a mission action during its next activation without forfeiting its normal movement or combat action. That's pretty cool. Uh, which I guess are like scenario interactions. Uh, and you get five extra damage boxes. So these are cool. So this is like, basically, you pick your force. It's a 20 or 25 point army using the standard rules, right? But you get no heavy war beasts and no war casters. So it's just units and solos and lights um, that you can take. And then you, whoever you nominate to be your general can be a unit leader or a solo. Because it can be a unit leader, doesn't it? Because like that way your unit leader has like six boxes. Um, you get to give them one of these upgrades. And both sides obviously would have access to all of them. And then you get these, and these are all, I'm not sure how they activate. I'm assuming that's something to do with those pointy cards, but you get all these little tactical cards and they all have different effects. Some of them might have rolls to activate. Looks like that one needs like a five plus to activate. And of course we'll figure this out when we get to the Let's Play, but lots of different mini feats basically that you can do. Um, and these are your, your, your I guess you're your play counterplaying these during the game to try and complete your mission. So I'm pretty jazzed about this. I love the fact that there's some tailoring. So this is a thing that I love in skirmish games it's never really been in war machine which is getting to add in your own little flavor so like let I, if i want to convert my i don't know let's say i decide i want to do the storm cat uh, no, 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 i guess i don't know i don't know maybe i want to do something else maybe I want to do trolls let's say i want to do, do like a cool fell collar and i make him like a, a marshal and give him a beast it could be like two against the world <laughs> right because for 20 points a light plus a dude I'd have like two models and maybe like a little unit of guys, like some pigs or something like that. Um, but it gives you a little bit of tailoring. So you can make it a little bit your own. You can theme your army the way that you want them to be. And I'm pretty jazzed about that. So um, there it is. There's our first look at unboxing for the, um, the company of Iron Box up from Farmer's Press. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm probably going to do um, uh, more of these as, as they come up because I've got stuff that's cool to look at. I'd really like to unbox some... Um, so much of call it some of the uh, Walking Dead stuff, uh, and I'll probably do these on Fridays. So I'll either do them from home or I'll do them here. Uh, I don't, I know I can, I get better light here, obviously, but we'll see. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this because I'm gonna do it more often. So I just like interacting with you guys, and these are like so quick and easy to do. And the fact I can do them from my phone is so awesome too. Uh, so we'll see you for more of these next time. Uh, and yeah, enjoy your little little sneak peek in the studio. You can see the crazy amount of stuff with the shelves. <laughs> uh, and we'll see you tomorrow for whatever's up next. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, keep on commenting and chatting in the video about what you want to see next. Until then, I'm Ash. Have a good